If you like what you're seeing and hearing, please consider subscribing to the podcast. You can go to either Apple iTunes, the Google Play Store, Spotify, or Amazon Music in the podcast section. It'll hit Monday morning or Sunday afternoon, depending on when it posts. And it, the video will hit on YouTube and Spotify Monday. Spotify will hit Monday evening, and YouTube it will hit Monday morning, 7 a.m., just like it does for the audio services. So please go to those places and consider subscribing or listening to the show. You can also write to me at gwgpodfellows at gmail.com if you want to write me a letter, let me know what you think of the show, things like that. Or you can also find me on Twitter at Just Little Joe. So go to those places and please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks. And uh, with that, we'll get on to the episode. Hello, my name is Joseph Carlson, and this is episode 229 of Game of Grief. And in this episode, I'm just going to talk about D&D and my history with D&D. I'm doing that because I find myself lately being very inspired and creative while I'm playing D&D, and it's actually helping my mental health. And I've talked about it with people in my group and things kind of on the pod. You can go to that. I The episode is called Just Chatting with Jesse, Just Chatting with Todd. I also um, talked to an old friend of mine, Todd Tiff. He's also on podcasts um stuff like that but i'm really finding kind of like inspiration and stuff so um you know let's just get into the pod and start talking about the old dnd so this is where it all starts for me i was uh, really young i was um probably 11 or 12 uh i was at a friend of my father's house he was a nice guy um, i'm not gonna say his name for reasons i don't want to dox him but he kept asking me questions like I was kind of sitting there twiddling my thumbs. My dad was having a talking with um, my, you know, this person who introduced me to the game. His wife, they were like having coffee, talking, and I was kind of bored out of my mind. And, um, you know, he just kept asking me questions about board games and things. Do you like board games? What kind of board games? And, uh, you know, do you like games in general? And then he kept getting really abstract. I said, is this like Monopoly? And he was like, no. And I, he said, you create a character, like, um, you know, someone you pretend to be. And that was really weird to me. But he produced this book from his bookshelf. And this actually isn't the book because that I had since I was 11 or 12 and it fell apart. But in an act of nostalgia, I actually went to eBay and I purchased uh, this. So this is where I started. I looked at this cover so much when I was a young when I was a young man that th this is where I started with my journey with D&D &D. and the first character I ever made was a ranger um, I don't remember his name I was only level one it did very feel feel like the person who knew me the game was kind of uh, ad-libbing a bit obviously he didn't have time to prep he just kind of sprung this on me you know if I liked the game and he talked a lot about um you know, uh, he made up a lot of things on the fly, I could tell, because one of the names of the uh, my party that was with me uh, was the, it was a priest, and there was an elvish something. I don't remember if she was a fighter or what, but it was a human priest, and he was named Dorito. So I think that was my one indication that you could actually ad-lib when it came to um, D&D. You could just say, hey, I think I'm going to call this person Dorito, and that's what it's going to be. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I... Um, actually just stood stood and stared at this for a long time. Now, I am just going to flip through and show you some of the art because I think it's great. And um, I, I remember looking at this for a long time as well. So this was art that I remember looking at over and over, just laying on my bedroom floor, just looking at this art. And it's amazing. Uh, I wrote down, I actually have the name of the artist somewhere. I'll get that. But um which I'll bring in another piece, which kind of completes this puzzle and why one of the reasons why I'm doing this episode. But um, this is what I would sit and just stare on the floor just in my bedroom, and I would just make endless endless characters. I would just make whatever came to my mind. That's what I would do. But I want to show you this other piece of thing, which again puts this all together and shows why I'm doing this. This is the Dungeons & Dragons Arts & Arcana. Uh, it came out several years ago i want to say 2017 but i'm probably wrong and if i was very professional i'd probably look up but i got this on sale i got the ephemera as well there's some posters and things like that um but i want to show you uh kind of where where their part in the timeline where it starts so i remember these books 
And, um, you know, the second edition, you can see the preview here, the ads. And I remember these extra with these brown books. And like they said in Arts and Arcana, this really did break the game. Because I remember several people coming to the game and wanting to use the materials out of these books and things. And it just totally, totally breaking the brain of, um, you know, everything. So um, I also <laughs> just realized I should probably apologize to the audio version, uh, people that listen to this through audio. Uh, this is, uh, I'm doing a lot of like picture and picture and stuff on YouTube. I recommend going and recommend and, and uh, subscribing to the YouTube version of the episode just to see like some of this stuff. Maybe it'll jog some memories. Um, also, I had, I'll see if I can find it, but I had one other piece that they advertise in this. One so this is what I had. I had the black box that's up in the corner here. And I remember these dice that are down below because it came with the box set. And it, um, I just remember the color of the dice. In fact, I tried to get my father to play a session. It was probably about two hours. It was probably the worst two hours of his life. And uh, <laughs> I just remember... Him not wanting to roll, him kind of looking at me like this is weird, not really wanting to engage. He didn't really understand why I thought it was so important, but I still, uh, he played to the end. And, and I kind of realized, I don't even think it ended, you know, I mean, I didn't finish the story. I remember just him looking very mad that everything was, uh, you know, done. So that was that. And, uh, you know, that is where kind of I started with D&D. Um, I have skipped central generations of D and D, but I'm playing fifth edition. Now you can hear that on some of the episodes early on, like the eighties. I did a session with my wife and a friend. Um, me and my friends are working on something now where we're playing again and I'm recording some of that. So hopefully I'll have an announcement of that soon, but man, just looking through all this and also looking through the art of this book. And, uh, I'm going to show you one of those pieces, uh, here now. And, uh, what I find really amazing about this arts and arcana section is that, uh, the artist put like a stamp or a um, sticker to say that it was their favorite piece of art that they produced, if I'm understanding their grading system correctly. This is just um, some of the art in the art book. Again, this isn't the, uh, you know, the the best art. I didn't find one of those yet. I'm still looking through the book. I mean, I, I looked through it, but I didn't, I didn't actually uh, write down the pages I should have. But this is just an example of the type of art that people were producing for the game, and I think it's pretty amazing. Um, again, I'm now playing 5th edition, and so, you know, telling all these stories and being able to do this is pretty great. So this is the new starter set for 5th uh, edition, and I did get this. I played some of it with my friends. There is a new starter set that just came out a little bit ago, um, a seafaring one, but this is the starter starter set for 5th edition. I remember the dice being the same and kind of being a little bled down from my history of playing the game and knowing that, you know, this isn't really what I wanted, this isn't whatever. But I'll say this, I, I can't believe, one, that it's, it's um, you know, this game has endured so long. There's about to be, what, I think a 50-year or 40-year anniversary coming up in a few years. And... Um, you know, in this ephemera of this Arts and Arcana, there is actually the original Tomb Tomb of Horrors uh, copied supplement, which I'll show here, uh, I, just to show the full breadth of the history of this game. So one sec. Yeah, and there it is. There's the, uh, you know, the uh, original Tomb of Horrors that came out in, I want to say 1975. And in the pages you'll see, which I'll flip to soon, but you'll see the original graph paper maps, the original um, tabulations for treasure, uh, the locations of some of the enemies. So when the the PCs, the player characters would go to these locations. And from what I read in Arts and Arcana, it was very brutal. Uh, in fact, it killed many people over the weekend uh, of the convention that they ran it at. And I even read an anecdote that like people would come out playing it and go to the next group that was going to come in to play it and be like, hey, avoid this. They could, they could talk shop a little bit. So I thought that was pretty great. So here's some of the maps and things um, that were in uh, Tomb of Horrors. And it's pretty great. It's pretty amazing that that is something that you can see in the game. So, yeah. So I'm back. It, um... Sorry for the weird camera angle. I only have one webcam and I'm having to move it back and forth in position and all that stuff. 
But this is a me and D&D, you know, like I said, uh, whatever your hobby is, uh, you know, at least make sure that you're not hurting people and, you know, people and yourself, obviously. You're trying to get the help you need if you have any mental health things. But really with D&D, for me, it's been about, you know, sitting down and brainstorming and coming up with ideas and spending time with your friends and making each other laugh and remembering things and calling back to old campaigns and stuff like that. It's all pretty great. And I don't think I would be mentally where I am without d d So to all the people at Wizards of the Coast, I know I have two subscribers or 11 subscribers or whatever, but thanks a lot for the years of memories. I know there's a lot of things on the web about, oh, this is my favorite. They've ruined it with this edition. This edition's great. I've ruined it with this. Here's the rule set. I just like that the game is still able to endure and that people are still finding it in ways. And to be able to log on online now and see actual play shows with people uh, you know, kind of finding the same things out of it that I used to find back in the day and that I still have the passion for that. So thank you very much, D&D. You know, soon it's going to be your birthday. So I guess this is just a very early birthday gift to D&D. Uh, so I didn't really buy anything. You're, you're, of, you're of many means. You have a dragon horde of gold. Uh, <laughs> but thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And I, yeah, this is kind of a weird episode. But, you know, thanks for helping my mental health, D&D.